Vice President Kamala Harris appeared on The View yesterday to talk all things 2024. And, well, let's take a look. Harris asked what she was going to do to, quote, stop the crazies. And what are you going to do to stop the crazies? I am scared as heck. <laughs> Yeah. Which is why I'm traveling our country. You know, there's an old saying that there are only two ways to run mm. for office, either without an opponent or scared. So on all of those points, yes, we should all be scared. The vice president also broke down what exactly this year's presidential election will mean for our democracy. We are in the month of January. We've got 10 months to go until the election. Mm -hmm. And increasingly, and you've seen it even just this week, um, we are all starting to narrow in on what this election will mean. And frankly, in the midst of so many big issues challenging our world that, you know, are not binary, you know, it's not just one side or the other. On this one, there's a split screen that you can throw up and see. Yeah. And it's going to be the choice between what is about respecting our democracy, what is about competence versus chaos. Kamala Harris gave another warning about a possible Trump election win. A person running to become the commander of ch in chief who is admitting he would weaponize the Department of Justice. Uh -huh. These issues in terms of how we are doing on a daily basis and how our democracy in our country is doing are inextricably linked. And here's one last clip from this action-packed view episode that we wanted to share with you for good measure. We have to earn the reelect, mm -hmm. and we have to communicate what we have achieved. Yes. And, and that is going to be one of our big challenges. We've done a lot of good work. We need to net, let people know who brung it to them. <laughs> All right. There was... Um, Let's take it from the top. She said yeah. so little with so much. What I've noticed is that... She does a thing where she'll just like point around the room and name things and state truths. So Robbie, we're drinking coffee in this room. And it's important to realize that when you have computers in front of you, you are at work. And when America goes to work, that's when we win. Yeah, it's the just the <laughs> emphasis rather than the words. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, it reminds me of, like, of, uh, of um, the, the, the Family Guy clip. Uh, there's an episode where Lois is running for mayor, and uh, the dog, uh, Brian, tells her, like, the voters aren't paying attention to the actually words you're using. It's how you say it. And then she's just like, 9-11 was bad. 9-11. 9-11. <laughs> right? It's not, it's just empty. It's, it's the more the cadence than anything yeah. else with her. But substantively, Who are the it crazies? is. It's interesting. I, I want to come to that uh, right off top. Uh, it seems like this is another one of, I mean, it's the views framing, so I don't blame her. I don't think that that's right. a word that she would have reached for necessarily, unless it was like printed on a mug in front of her. Um, but the question is about what, how we should, how politicians should talk about the fact that 50% of the country is obviously conservative, and much of that 50% identifies specifically with the MAGA movement. Now, there was some, were some branding attempts from the Biden administration to um, cordon off MAGA as a separate entity right. than um, and not Republicans. To, and specifically not to round them up to half of the entire country, as Hillary right. Clinton famously did. Right. And, you know, I think the problem with that is that increasingly people either identify as MAGA as Republicans or feel like Trump is so embattered that even if they personally don't describe themselves as MAGA, they would vote for him. And I think we saw that in the Iowa polls, that people who did not self-identify as MAGA or who even thought that Trump might be liable for some of these criminal issues would still cast their mm -hmm. vote, for, vote for him regardless because we live in a vote blue no matter who, lesser of two evils style country where a lot of people who do have frustrations with Trump want to vote for him. And that being the case, are you going to tell all those people that are willing to vote for Trump because they're simply not Democrats? They simply, from a policy perspective, are never going to vote for a Democrat. Right. That's just like no one at that table except for, um, you know, Alyssa Farah is ever going to vote for a Republican. Right. Crazies. I'm not sure that that is right. winning hearts and minds. Right. She was set up for it, as you're right, because right. that's Joy. how Joy phrased it. But you could say, well, 
I mean, the, the, the people you're describing as crazies are our fellow Americans, and Joe Biden is their president as well, and I want to win them over. Maybe that's impossible, but I'm going to try. I don't think Donald Trump is deli delivered for them substantially, and here's everything. We th and, 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 all, and also, maybe speak to, you think they're, what, are they crazy for having dissenting, for wanting to embrace free speech and wanting to be able to express their views on social media or I embracing COVID views that have been demonized? I mean, you know, uh, RFK Jr. and his supporters called crazy by many mainstream people in the media attracted at least some level of Democratic support. He has supporters. He has people who voted for Barack Obama and who voted for Joe Biden who support him now. Um, again, you can just strategically just give up on these people. These people are crazies. These are not our voters. We're hoping to keep as many voters as we have and then maybe pick off some affluent Republican women in the suburbs who just can't, can't mm -hmm. do Trump again. Maybe that's the strategy. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, you can point to specific crazy things that Republican politicians are saying and doing right now. After all, there is a Republican primary happening that gives you fodder to talk about what people actually believe. And we're going to defeat unlike, the woke mind virus. <laughs> unlike defeat what it. Democrats have going on on their side. So, for example, you could pick up on the fact that there is this— um, fear people have about whether or not Donald Trump in office and a Republican Congress is going to pass a national abortion ban. That's something that mm -hmm. she could say, well, I don't want to weigh in on the constituents. We all were running a campaign to bring this country together. That's what Don, um, uh, Joe Biden ran on in, in 2020. But I am willing to say that there are people in our government and who are running for office who are trying to split us apart by passing laws that hurt some of the most vulnerable among us. She could pick up on, let's say, some of Nikki Haley's recently condemned uh, comments about uh, what the cause of the Civil War was or how America has never been a racist country. Nikki Haley, who was in office during the Charleston shooting, I believe, who had to take down the Confederate flag from the front of the state house in, in South Carolina, you know, pick up on some of the easy wins that Republicans are handing up on you on a platter. They're uh, in Kentucky. They're trying to uh, pass a law that allows you to do self-defense to hit and violently attack homeless people. There are bills across the country with Republicans trying to um, end free school lunch programs. I mean, there's plenty of fodder to talk about what politicians are doing, Republican politicians are doing, that are out of step with even their base. Health care concerns. All of these things are a real problem. There's real problems in America. But instead of doing that, you know, she leans into this framing, which I think shows a real lack of political instinct. Then in the frank. next uh, uh, question, she when she does exactly what you described in the, it's January, we know. <laughs> 10 months till the election. Uh, 250 days. Uh, however many blue? hours. Like, I'm wearing blue. <laughs> okay, we got it. You've set the stage. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. She, uh, she also... Um, um, I, I lost my train of thought Sorry. because she's so disorienting. <laughs> so did she. What did she say? Oh, binary choice. It's yeah. a binary choice. Well, it's actually not a binary not choice a binary at all. Um, in fact, there's a, a third person in the race who is pulling at 12%. That's, you can't just write that off. So it's not, in fact, a binary choice. There are other candidates. There will be a Green Party candidate, a Libertarian Party candidate. There might be other independent candidates. Um, and there's other many candidates in the Democratic thousands, Party. Many millions of Americans will vote for a candidate other than um, the Republican or the Democrat. Um, both of us sitting here are probably not very likely to vote for the Democrat or the Republican. Most certainly so, not. Um, so to just do erasure on that is always kind of obnoxious. Yeah, let's look at this. Marianne Williamson is currently leading uh, uh, Phillips, Dean Phillips, um, with twice as much. She's got 6.4% of the vote as of today's 538 average poll. Phillips is at 3.1%. Um, and to go on TV, to not only shut down a primary, not only to change the debate, uh, the primary schedule to advantage Joe Biden, putting a state where he performed very strongly first uh, back mm -hmm. in 2020, but then to go on TV and lie about the existence of a Democratic primary if you're really confident in your position, let the truth be known. Let Biden actually advocate, compete for the votes that he feels so entitled to. But what's happening now is that you're going to have lied people into the believing that they had no other options. And then when they go to the polls or they're facing going to the polls this fall, they might look around and say, well, I'd rather just stay home because none of these options are adequate. Right. And then they're going to turn around and blame the very base who has been waving the red flag the, ringing the alarm bells loudly now yeah. for months for their failure to actually beat Trump. Yeah, they want it. They want it to be a binary choice, but it's not. Actually, they want it to be one short of a binary <laughs> choice. They want it to not be a choice, and it's just Trump. There's no one else on the ballot. Yeah, Maybe but they got They got to protect Biden democracy. and like January 6th or something. Are your choices? That would be ideal from their standpoint. More rising right after this.